This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, uh, if you're a long-term viewer of this channel, you may recall that back in late 2020, early 21, I did uh, a series of videos on playing blues lead guitar. Um, various different things like, you know, using the pentatonic and targeting chord notes and all manner of stuff. Um, and I never really looked at doing the rhythm guitar aspect of blues. And I've also had a few requests um, of late to start in these Wednesday lesson uh, videos to start doing some stuff on playing rhythm guitar. So I thought be a good opportunity to combine the two. So what we're going to be doing for the next uh, few weeks, for the foreseeable future at least, is concentrating on playing rhythm guitar in this Wednesday slot. And we're going to start with a few videos on playing blues rhythm guitar. And what we're going to do today is look at probably one of the most widely used blues rhythm guitar techniques. It's called a shuffle, and it goes like this. And here's a little bit of an explanation about what's going on with a blues shuffle. The blues shuffle. An explanation. Okay then, the blues shuffle. Let's take a look at what was going on there. Basically, in that little piece that you heard earlier, I did three different variations on the same blues shuffle idea. So let's start with what happened on the first 12-bar sequence. Speaking of the 12-bar sequence, let's have a look at what that actually is. That is the chord sequence I was... Um, playing there uh, it's typical 12 bar blues uh, based on the one four and five chords of a key which in the key of a would be a d and e and in blues we usually make those into seventh chords and that is um kind of what's going on here i'm not really playing seventh chords uh in what i'm playing here but there is an organ part on there and what the bass line is doing uh essentially makes the chords into seventh chords um so that is the uh, the 12 bar blue sequence the a d and e arranged in that fashion there so uh, let's have a look at how i'm playing that first uh, chorus of the shuffle uh, basically i'm going for an a root note here and i'm playing like a power chord like that and if we're thinking about a rhythm that's going one and two and three and four and then what I'm doing on, on beats two and four, I'm reaching up to the ninth fret here on the A string for this F sharp note. And I'm going like that and putting that on on beats two and four. So one and two and three and four and like that. Okay. And then all I do when I go for the D chord is just move that down so that that is now kind of getting its root on the uh, D note there on the fifth fret of the A string and just the same thing again one and two and three and four and with this uh, this sixth here is musically what it is this interval from there to there 
um, but basically the ninth fret on the uh, on the D string, giving me um, that extra note that I put on beats two and four. And then all I do when I go for the E, well, if you take anything which is a D and move it up two frets, it becomes an E. These are the chord shapes uh, that we're going through there. So uh, we've got the A, the D, and the E. Anytime you see any footage of Chuck Berry or Status Quo or basically any other band that uh, does a lot of kind of bluesy rock and roll sort of stuff, you will see that kind of chord shape going on. In fact, I think wasn't the uh, the album cover of Status Status Quo's Twelve Gold Bars? Wasn't it that shit? Wasn't that the actual album artwork? Hand doing that? I think it was. Um, so those are like the movable chord shapes and because you've got them movable you can kind of move them around to any key just look at where your root note is so if i wanted to do it in f there's an f bit of a stretch this one then something like that so you can move those around and play them in any key um, the reason why there are so many uh, blues uh, songs and rock and roll songs and stuff in the key of A is because when you're in the key of A, you get a nice helpful open string uh, down here. So you can be play basically this by just uh, using the open A string. Let me get rid of that for, for the moment. You can basically play the open A string. There's your sort of core power chord. And then you're just putting this note on here. Again, one and two and three and four. And, and this note is coming on on beats two and four. Works well if you give it a little bit of palm muting with this hand as well. So what do we do when we want to go to the D? Well, you've already seen. Basically, we just move that shape down so that we're now playing on the uh, D string root on the fourth string so we then get and then we can kind of go one step this way um, you know onto using the E string root sixth string and go so you could have um, you know, your A, D, and E, like that. A, D, E, or you can do the A, D, and E, like that. The only, th the only kind of slight kind of disadvantage not disadvantage, but the thing that you have to watch out for is you've got to be pretty good at making sure both hands agree on which pair of strings they're playing on. Um, something that can and does go wrong often with uh, this one is down here is when people kind of then move this hand down so they're doing the D, they'll go and forget to move this hand down as well. So, you know, make sure you do that. so that you don't have to think about it it just feels and becomes automatic so that was the the second um you know kind of shuffle uh, chorus that i did there the third one um was basically a variation on uh, that one that you've just seen there what i'm going to do here though is i'm going to add some extra notes in with my um second and third fingers um so we're still putting <laughs> This note on which if you remember earlier that is the sixth why is that a sixth by the way because if i was to go up an a major scale six notes one two three four five six i come to that note you see uh, so that's why we call it a sixth that kind of thing but i'm going to put in a couple of other notes and they are going to be on the third fret and the fourth fret 
on the same string where my root note is. So there's my root note on the A string, and I'm going to put the third and fourth fret notes on there. So I'm going to get. And I can do that on the two and, like I was doing there, one and two and three and four and. Or I can do it on the four and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's a nice little way of kind of getting from the A up to the D actually because it makes it for a nice little run that takes you there. Like that. Here's what those runs look like. You can see the basic. I've greyed out. Um, just for clarity there, what, what uh, I'm doing by adding that kind of note on. I've just shown you where the um, where those uh, third and fourth fret notes are. I'm using my third, uh, second and third fingers. Sometimes you'll see people doing it with the, uh, with like the one finger like, or even using the fourth finger. Just find which way works for you, really. Um, so you could play through um, a whole 12-bar sequence like this. sound you've heard many many times and um as i said because you can add those extra notes in and because the ease of uh, just playing off an open string route um that's why you get so many songs i suppose uh, blues tunes and rock and roll tunes and classic rock tunes that have a bluesy bent to them uh, in the key of a because you've got that and you can put the you know um what would be a, a, an example of something that went a bit like that? You know, uh, Led Zeppelin. But, um, you know, you can see you're grabbing an extra note, note there. That's something else that you can do, but I left it out of uh, this short little lesson today for simplicity. No doubt we'll come back to uh, other variations on the shuffle pattern in a later episode of this series on uh, how to play a blues shuffle. So you've got quite a few ideas there to, um, to go and put into practice. Go and have some fun with them. And as always, there is a full tab for that uh, piece of music and you know all the different approaches tabbed out and um basically a jam track to play along with and the clip of me playing it and the uh, that explanation you've just seen there all of that is as always up on my patreon page there's the address and the link is as ever in the description it's only three dollars or two pound fifty a month and you get access to all of these additional resources that go along with these videos a massive heartfelt thank you to everybody who supports me in that or any of the other ways all of which are linked down below. And that is pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you found this video useful and informative in some small way. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it? As always, don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5pm UK time, where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars. What's not to like about that? It's a fantastic way to kick off the weekend, and I would love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.